and welcome to this month's Kidneys in the Kitchen. I'm Megan Craig, Director of Programs for the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois, and I am joined as always by a beautiful dietitian uh, who's going to talk with us today about Asian-inspired cooking. So we're going to do this one actual cooking style. I, 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 you probably all remember the last time I tried to use a hot plate on this show. It did not go well we're hoping is going to go better this time. So, Melissa, tell us about yourself. Hi, everyone. I am Melissa Prest. I am a registered dietitian. I work for Fresenius Kidney Care. Um, I have been working with um, people living with kidney disease for over a decade now. So I really do enjoy um, just working with, with people that have chronic illnesses. I think it's, it's great to be able to help them, um, you know, live a healthy lifestyle and you know be the best they can so awesome and we all know that's what this whole show is about so um, we're going to be making a stir fry today and we will um, post on our website all the ingredients and the steps so that you can follow follow along at home if you'd like um, but I guess let's get started with our Asian inspired kidney friendly meal. All right, let's all right, do it. All right, what's our first step? So our first step is that we're going to, um, well, if at home, we've already kind of pre-prepped some things, but um, you know, we would chop up all of the vegetables and the meat and get everything ready. Um, so our first step though is to sear the um, beef. We did beef for this recipe. The great thing about stir fries is that you can, you know, kind of pick any protein you'd like. Um, a lot of Asian, in general, Asian food is heavy on vegetables. You see a lot more fish. You might have some soy or tofu. Um, so we did beef today, but you can do pork, you could do chicken, you know, kind of whatever um, protein source that you want to do for this. So we're going to start with that. And then once that's seared, we're going to take that out. We'll cook the vegetables. When that is done, we're going to add back the, um, the beef, kind of mix it together. We've already prepared the starch part of it, which will be noodles. Um, noodles or rice are also very common in Asian cooking. Um, so then when everything's done, we'll just add the noodles in and you will have a stir fry bowl ready to go. Awesome. And, you know, we're always talking on here about the fact that just because you have kidney disease or kidney issues doesn't mean that you can't eat exciting, delicious meals. You just have to watch some things that maybe everyone else doesn't right. normally have to watch. So right. um, everything that we're going to be using today is the kidney friendly version. Yes. And this is a kidney friendly recipe altogether. So um, yeah. yeah, so we have um, a low sodium soy sauce as opposed to a regular soy sauce. We chose lower potassium vegetables instead of, you know, a higher potassium vegetable. So, um, yeah, a lot of it's just kind of making some smart swaps or substitutions and you can still have really great flavorful food without the sodium and things that you still enjoy. Perfect. So we'll talk you through those a bit as we go as well. So we start by browning the meat. That's what we do. All right. Awesome. What kind of oil are we using? So we have a um, vegetable oil, which is what the recipe called for. You could do, you know, sometimes you might find peanut oil in Asian cooking, sesame oil, um, olive oil, you know, any of those are going to be going to be okay. Going to be okay. No substantive difference in... No, nothing okay. nothing too different with that. Sometimes we look at what we call like a smoke point, you know, kind of how high that oil can get to when we're cooking with it. Um, <clears throat> so we, we're good with the vegetable oil. Okay, awesome. Yeah. We want to measure it out? Sure, we can definitely okay. do that. Okay. So we just want to do um, a little, a couple of, of teaspoons of it for now. Um, we're doing about half the oil right now. I'll open that up. Oh, did oh not. whoops. <laughs> did not I thought I prepared everything. <laughs> we did not take that I out. left the lid on something. That's all good. Sorry. That's okay. My bad. Out. So I have an electric wok here is what we're using. Um, we've already been heating it up, so it should be nice and hot. Feels like it. And of course, at home, you can use your own stove top as well. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a wok. Um, so I turn the heat up, or how does that um, I put it all the it's way up. all the way up. up. Okay, just yeah. kidding. Don't turn the heat up anymore. <laughs> and then we're gonna throw in the the beef. Okay, I do have a spatula over yeah, there. That probably the would be easier. That. Yeah. Um, Actually, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this because I'll probably use okay. a spatula in a little bit. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so it's not sizzling as much as it's I would have hoped. Not but yet, but it will. Oh. It will. It will. So we'll 
get it awesome. Turn that. I think, I think so not, somehow it got turned down. Sorry about that. Again, <laughs> probably me. As we all know, I do not have the best luck with heating implements on this show, but this is a, a bit of a view of what we're seeing in here. It's going to take a second to heat up, yeah. but we're just going to make sure that all the meat has some oil sort of on it and in it and around it and then we're going to give it a minute to reach that smoke point that yes. heat point so that it can actually um uh start sizzling yes. a bit and then when that does it then i will put in some garlic um it has a little bit of seasoning we want to put in a little bit of garlic okay. um and then also a little bit of um hot pepper and ginger so let me oh i hear the sizzling starting now it's starting there okay. we go okay so we're just going to do a little bit. Um, you know, some people don't like garlic or it's overpowering. So really, I mean, it's whatever to taste. So the, the recipes always have a suggested amount, but you can always do things to kind of your preference or your taste. There's really nothing wrong with that. So I'm just going to do a fourth of a teaspoon of the garlic. I might have to do a, I'll do a, I'll just do a half. We'll do a little bit more. I like garlic. I do too. And it smells really good in here right it now. Does. So do a little bit of that. Now ginger is pretty powerful. So, you know, I would say less is more with ginger. Sure. And uh, at the grocery store, we got this ginger paste. That's okay, yeah, right? Yeah, that's totally fine. Same sort of thing as yep. what you would get in the, in yep. the um, produce pile. Yep. And the same thing with the, that's already kind of peeled up garlic, which is great. Um, you know, if you're someone that's kind of tired, doesn't really want to chop a lot of things, especially after treatment, you know, kind of going with a convenience option like this would be perfectly fine. Okay. And then let's kind stir of it around stir a little. Stir it around a little. Sizzly. Yeah. So we want to get a nice sear. And that's what we're doing. Get some from the brown and starting to brown is what I should say. <laughs> I think we want to do a little bit of the, Megan, it's closer to you, the pepper. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we got a fresh pepper and de-seeded it and chopped it into little pieces. Um, and by we, I mean our producer, Sarah Jane, who never gets any credit on this show, but she's actually the person who prepares everything, so should probably make that point. Um, so uh, we is fresh, but we do have some uh, dried red pepper dried as well, pepper. which is just what you can get in the in the seasoning aisle. So if you're more into that, oh, and I told the producers also that it wouldn't smoke and was, again, wrong. So. Well, it's more steamy. It's more steamy than smoky, and we can probably lower this a little bit, too. Getting some nice awesome. sear on that. And I can throw in a little bit of the... So the one thing about me is I I follow recipes, but then I also like to improvise a little bit. So um, the only time I don't do that is with baking. Baking is probably the one yeah. thing you really have to be pretty precise on that. But when you're cooking at home, you know, get creative. Add a little bit of something. Take a little bit of something out. It's, it's totally fine. So I would grab a little bit of the red pepper flakes. Now the nice thing about using, um, you know, kind of pepper to season is you're going to get a lot of great flavor without any sodium, which obviously, you know, we want to really watch out for. Um, so that's kind of the nice thing about using a pepper or, you know, the garlic or some type of herb seasonings. Those are all great ways to flavor your food without all of the sodium. Yeah, and as you're going along, I see we have kind of a couple of pieces of the redder meat and some pieces are browner, so we're going to kind of get those all mixed in together, make sure everything gets kind of done all evenly, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. It's looking stir-fry-ish. It is. Yeah, and you know, the nice thing about a stir-fry is that it really is kind of a one-pot meal. Um, you can always pre-do things, so if, per se, you have a dialysis treatment, you could always kind of prep everything the day before, and then you can, um, you know, cook it then the day of your dialysis treatment, or you can, you know, kind of make things the day before. It's, you know, good for leftovers and um, heat it up, too. So it's kind of a nice, easy type of meal to put together sure. without, you know, having too much effort going to it. I know a lot of the times, you know, people that I work with kind of talk about how tired they get. Um, so we want to try to find meals that are not going to be so labor-intensive to, to put them together. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Um, okay, what's next? So the next thing is we're going to, I think this is probably pretty good, we're gonna take the meat out and then we're gonna cook all the vegetables. So it right. looks pretty seared. So let's take this out and we'll use the slotted spatula. So any kind of um, slotted spoon or spatula that you have, um, you just wanna kind of make sure you get that out. So we're gonna Gonna drain that out. We're gonna stick this all in the bowl, and that's because we're kind of using the juice. We're gonna to reuse kind of the juice and the oil that's in here. The recipe, you know, calls for using um, half of the oil in the recipe and then putting another half in with the vegetables. So, depending on how much juice you have in here, the nice thing is that this is a non-stick pan, so you really don't need a lot of oil. Sure. Um, in this. And for people who are watching calories as well, the more oil we use, the more calories right. we're adding. So maybe if you can cut back on that, do yep. if that's what you're trying to watch. Yep. So I just cool. take all this out. There's a lot of little pieces. Er, yeah, <laughs> sorry. So also this recipe calls for um, slice yes. strips, strips of meat. And uh, I'm a vegetarian, so um, I bought pre-chopped meat so that I wouldn't have to <laughs> to uh, slice totally it myself. Okay. Uh, and that did make the prep easier, I have to say. It does make the prep easier. And again, if you're tired and you just, you can buy some pre-chopped meat, totally fine. And actually pre-chopped veggies too, right? Yeah. It tends to be a little more expensive that way, so uh, we uh, chopped our own, but um, right, yeah, definitely a thing we can do. Yes, it is. I think we got it. I think we got it all. Yep, all right. so now we are going to put in the vegetables. So you can see our oil is still in there and crackling. And so we have some zucchini. Yep, we have um, two colors. Two zucchini. colors. We have yellow, um, so summer squash zucchini, the yellow and green. Um, those are both great low potassium vegetables. You can also put in a little bit of peas if you wanted, or some cauliflower or broccoli, kind of just whatever lower sodium um, vegetables you have. So you can definitely do that. So we're going to kind of mix these in. So now we're just cooking these to get them kind of a crisp tender for the stir fry. Kind of mix those all in. They look good. So the, I know you, we don't have like smell of vision yet, but <laughs> I, I wish we did because it does smell really good. It does. So the other thing I brought, um, this is, it's olive oil, but it's in a, a pump. So instead of using like a cooking spray, you can just get, you know, kind of a glass spray bottle. You can spray it. So it's another really good way of controlling how much oil that you're, sure. that yeah. you're eating. Um, so I'm just going to pump Wave it. In some of this smoke you away. Get a pump. Or steam. Hopefully steam. 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 But the nice thing is then I can just kind of spray it in. Ah, instead of putting a whole instead of putting a whole bunch of yeah. yeah yeah so getting some nice um, nice color on these as we cook them up that looks great yeah it's nice we're gonna go into summer soon we we'll get all these great fresh veggies. And I guess I'll take this moment to say this recipe also calls for peas, which you'll all see if you're uh, looking online and making this uh, at home. I forgot to buy them, so no peas in ours. But uh, one of the nice things about stir fry is that you can kind of mix and match. Yeah. So maybe I don't like peas. I do like peas. I just forgot. But <laughs> that's all right. So we're also going to add, I think we need to add, I don't think we have it on here yet. Oh, we're going to do that second, sorry. Okay. We're going to add soy sauce once we put the put the meat back in. So okay. So kind of cook up the vegetables a little bit. They look pretty good. Yeah, they're doing pretty real good. Little, little crispy, a little soft. Little crispy, a little soft. So we're going to put the meat back in. Okay. Kind of mix everything together. Okay, now it really looks like stir fry. It does, right? Um, so now we add in a little bit of soy sauce, which I know is in the front. Yes, right, right there. there. You got it's it. Right there. And I see we got the less sodium soy sauce. We do. And this calls for three tablespoons, but it's the lower sodium soy sauce. So I don't know if we want to look over at the label sure. while it's cooking, if we can see it in the Let's steam. See. Let's get in there. Got Everyone them. knows that we have huge <laughs> issues seeing labels. Here we go. 
Okay. All right. So um, you'll see on there, you know, if you look at, you want to look at this percent daily value column. And it's 25%. Um, so generally anything over 20 is going to be a higher source. But if you compare that to a regular you know, soy sauce, it's probably going to be maybe around 30 or a little higher than that. So. Okay. So at least a little less. It's a little less, yeah. Little so less. is there a difference between less sodium soy sauce and low sodium soy sauce? Or are those kind of going to be about the same? They're going to probably be about the same. Okay. I would say just kind of look at the food label. Um, and if you find one, whatever has you know that percent daily value column, you want to try to get whatever is the lower better. So again, less than 20% is going to be um, better. So anything between about 15 to 20, it says three tablespoons, I'm putting in three. Um, is um, usually less than five is very low, and then you've got kind of a medium source, five to fifteen, and then you kind of go a little bit upper over the over twenty. So we have that. Um, kind of mix that around. And the nice thing is the olive oil, the soy sauce, the you know the peppers, the garlic, the ginger, it's kind of all the seasonings in there, so your seasoning mix. So, you know, you won't have to really add like a garlic salt or anything like that. You've got some salt from the soy sauce, but it should be pretty, pretty flavorful. It smells good. It smells really good, especially now that the soy sauce is in it. Yeah. To say. It smells more like the bread. So then once that's kind of mixed together, we just add in the noodles. So these are already pre-cooked, um, but you would cook these maybe while you're doing this or before. So I'm going to just dump them in, and we're going to mix these all together. So these are a vermicelli noodle, I believe, is that Ah, uh, yeah, rice vermicelli Rice noodle. vermicelli. Everything here, uh, except the vegetables, we found in the Asian cooking aisle. So it was all kind of nice and together and easy to locate. Um, so, yeah, we did, of course, have to go to the produce aisle to get the, the summer squash sure. and the... Um, and the pepper, but right. otherwise. And the beef in there. Oh yeah, the beef did not come from the Asian food. It came from the meat. I'm going to use section. The meat yeah. section. Yeah. I'm going to try to use this and mix stuff around. Okay. Awesome. Show you all what that looks like at home. So, the, um, the noodles we cooked ahead, but you'll see in the recipe that uh, you can cook those noodles uh, just in a separate pot of water on your stove top while you're preparing the rest of um, the beef and the vegetables and everything. Yeah. And so I know in the recipe, so again, we're following the recipe a little bit here. Um, so I'm sure with putting in the noodles or the rice, it's kind of just getting the flavors all together. Um, but what I would do if I'm doing a stir fry at home is I would just portion out my noodles or rice on the side and kind of make um, a bowl out of it, you know, like a rice bowl or noodle bowl. That way you can control, um, you know, the portion of the starch a little bit more than if it's mixed together. And I know we got some special, some mirin, uh, which is a, an, an Asian cooking, uh, it, I, they called it a spice, but I think it's, it's more a liquid. Okay, so um, we'll stick that in. And uh, just for you at home also, um, I know cooking sherry, if you are in a pinch, can yeah. be substituted yeah. uh, in, in the case of the mirin uh, liquid. I want to say this is it right here. Maybe so. Yep. Yep. That's it. That is it. So I want to say just a little bit of that. So we'll do a fourth of a teaspoon again. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And we can kind of stir that in. We'll stir this all in. Yeah, and you'll notice the rice was really white, and now it's kind of got picked up that soy sauce color. It's got some browning to it. So I'll just lift this. Sorry, it's a little. <laughs> oh yeah, a uh, little yeah. hard to maneuver here. We have the world's tiniest utensils <laughs> because <laughs> they're usually just for show, and we're actually using them this time. But sometimes this is like real life, right? Yeah, you well, always have. Like you have utensils, right? It was like definitely no worries. No so. Worries. <laughs> 
So I think that's probably good. And then you can top it with a little bit of sesame seed, which we have here. Um, we have some sesame oil. You could also have used that in the stir fry. Let's see if this is open. Nope. Not open? Not open. We all know whose fault <laughs> that is. And of course, I can't get this open at the moment. Okay, let me try. Let's try. Oh, Megan, try. So it's just going to be a... Um, I will add a little bit of sesame oil to this. <laughs> the world's hardest spice, <laughs> but okay. Let's um, do a little bit of sesame oil. Sesame oil. Gives it a little extra flavor. Not a lot, because we put in the oil, you know, when we were cooking, we did the we did the vegetable oil. We sprayed a little bit else on. So just a little bit. Again, I'm gonna tap, tap, tap this. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. tap. And um, these uh, sesame seeds will um, will cook a bit while they're in here, but uh, for more flavorful sesame seeds, you can um, bake them first, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so you can put them on a baking sheet, or if you have a toaster oven, you can line a little bit in there, and you just, you would just toast them for maybe 30 seconds. You just got to get them a little bit brown. All right. Yeah, so you smell the, you can't smell, but we can smell the you sesame smell. oil. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that sesame oil really made it. Yeah, it does, it does. And again, just a little bit, you don't need a whole bunch. All right, that, that's about it. That's about it, right? Doesn't that's look, our recipe. Doesn't look pretty, but I'll give you one more. I'm going to give you a slightly closer up view so that you can see our, you can see kind of our noodles getting brown, all the veggies and the beef mixed in there. Our sesame seeds uh, disappeared a little, but they're in there. They're trust in there. us, you smells saw us good. put them in there. It <laughs> smells delicious. Another thing you're going to have to trust us on. Um, so uh, I just want to remind everyone, as always, that if you are on dialysis, we do have our everyday eating cookbook available for free. Um, you can get that by contacting the foundation. And as you all know, you can visit our website for great diet and nutrition information anytime um, you're looking for that. And uh, you can attend our free patient programs, which will also um, include a bunch of diet information. You may even see Melissa there because she does participate in a lot of those. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, once again, that website, diet and nutrition information, nkfi.org. That's like National Kidney Foundation, Illinois.org. Feel free to visit there. That's also where you'll find the recipe from today. So um, thank you. Looking forward to having you join us next time for Kidneys in the Kitchen. Thanks again for being here, Melissa. Thanks for asking. Bye. Bye.